When to claim Social Security is a question that's been asked as long as it's been around. So on today's show, I'm going to give you a few things to think about that may change your opinion on when to claim. It's time for the My Retirement Clarity Podcast with Lee Perkins, financial planner and president of JL Perkins Wealth Management. Get ready for a good dose of inspiration, simplicity, implementation, and of course, clarity on how to successfully prepare for retirement and grow and preserve your wealth. Here's Ben George with Lee Perkins. Welcome to the My Retirement Clarity Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Lee Perkins. I'm the founder the founder, and the owner of JL Perkins Wealth Management. So if you're a regular listener, you probably already know, uh, but for subscribers to the podcast, our firm specializes in working with retirees and pre-retirees that are usually age 55 and older. Um, you can visit our website and learn a lot more about us at uh, www.myretirementclarity.com. There's a lot of really great resources and you can learn more about our firm there. Uh, and of course, if you want to have a conversation with me, you can visit www.talkwithlee.com and that will take you directly to my calendar and we can schedule a 15 minute phone call just so I can learn a little bit more about you and your situation and see if I can add value. Uh, so there we go, get kind of the disclaimers out of the way. So people sometimes ask me, you know, Lee, why don't you have clients that are in their 30s and 40s? Um, and I would say we do have a few, of course, and those have been with us for a, a really a pretty long time now. But several years ago, we we sort of changed our focus because we believe that we can provide the most value to people that are in that 55 and older crowd. You know, of course, as you know, challenges that you face later in, in life are way different than the challenges that, that you face when you were younger. So, so that's who we've chosen to work with. And like I said, that's who I think we can add the most value to. Um, and so today's topic would probably not be of very much interest to the younger crowd. I can't imagine any 40-year-olds really wondering right now if they should claim Social Security early or delay their benefits but I know a lot of folks out there listening today may have that question. And so that's why we're talking about it on today's show. So Social Security is it's really a very critical part of the retirement income plan for most folks. And so you want to make sure you do what's right for you. Now, there's a lot of information out there about the ideal Social Security claiming strategy. Um, I actually just Googled it and found that there, you know, I got hundred and over 131 million results in just 0.76 seconds. So just under one second, I got 131 million results. So there's a ton of information out there, but that can also lead to a lot of confusion. So what I want to do on today's show is to sort of provide some clarity and some perspective and tell you what I see in the real world. Now, I'm not going to get into the, the nuts and bolts of Social Security and how it's calculated and what all's involved in that formula. If you want to get into the weeds on that, uh, you can certainly find that online as well. So what is the best strategy for you? Well, to me, the most important thing for you to know is that the best strategy for you is completely dependent on your individual situation. And so this is why you should never just do what your friend did or what your neighbor did. And unfortunately, that's what most people do. So I'm going to give you some quick numbers to sort of sort of kick things off. And I want to keep this very simple and very high level because I don't want you to lose the point of what I'm trying to illustrate here. So you're entitled to 100% of your Social Security benefit at your full retirement age. And of course, that depends on the year that you were born. And so usually it's going to be around the age of 66 or 66 in some months. Now, if you draw it early, you're going to receive a reduced amount. So if you claim that benefit at age 62, you're going to get about 75% of what you would have received at that full retirement age. And of course, if you delay taking Social Security past your full retirement age, you're going to get an additional 8% more every year. Now that's simple compounding. So if you wait to age 70, you're going to get 132% of that amount that you would have received at full retirement age. So there's the baseline information that I wanted you to know. And so here's what I tell people. If you need the money 
at age 62, draw Social Security early. Uh, and like, like I said, 62 is the earliest you can draw on your own record. So if you need the money then, go ahead and claim your benefit. But if you're still working, of course, you've got to remember there's an earnings test. So you need to keep that in mind. Uh, and most of the times if somebody's still working, they're not going to consider drawing Social Security at 62 anyway. But anyway, of course, if you don't need the money at age 62, then you can delay it. So for the purposes of this conversation, let's suppose that you do need the money, but you don't want to claim the benefit because you want more money over time. All right. So if this is the case for you and you do need the money, then you're going to have to draw that money from somewhere else. You're going to have to get it from your own assets. So you could choose to take it from your 401k or IRA or savings or whatever it is. And some people do choose to do this. But here's what I would tell you about that this strategy. Remember that when you die, there is no beneficiary on your Social Security. However, there will be a beneficiary on your assets. So you've got to ask yourself, do you want to spend the Social Security money or do you want to spend your money? So in my opinion, that's one of the very first considerations. Spend your own money or spend or claim the Social Security. All right, so now I want to address the issue of something called maximizing your Social Security. And, and of course, we can all use a calculator and do the math. And that math is going to tell you every time that if you delay Social Security, you're going to get a larger benefit in the future. And over time, you're going to wind up collecting more money. And that is simply a fact. And so meaning the, you're able to maximize the amount of dollars that you get from Social Security by delaying the benefit. So over time, it works out. The calculator doesn't lie. Um, so at some point, like I said, there, there's a break even point where the number is going to show that delaying social security is going to give you a higher lifetime payout. And, and I will tell you that in the past, I've even helped people with this calculation and sort of helped them determine when that ideal mathematical time to claim the benefit is. But here's the problem with making the decision based on math. And the problem is time. And time leads us to address two things, in my opinion, and that's our future health and our future death. So let me tell you what I see happening in the real world with real people, with real clients that I have. The first thing is we have no idea how long we're going to live. None of us do. Even if we've got great genes and our parents lived into their, their late 80s or 90s or even 100, we're not promised that same outcome. So our life expectancy is a major part of the math that's used in that spreadsheet and in that calculation that says that we should delay claiming the benefit. Hey folks, Lee Perkins here. If you've listened to this podcast for any amount of time, you know how much I hate taxes, and I know you probably do too. Our politicians are completely out of control. Their spending is off the chart, and you've got to be prepared for increasing taxes in the future. So we've written a book called Diffuse, Seven Steps to Protecting Your 401k or IRA from the Ticking Tax Time Bomb. You're going to want to grab a copy of this book and learn how you can protect yourself. Then you'll have to decide if you want to take action right now or if you'd rather wait until the IRS changes the rules of the game. Either way, the choice is yours. To get a free copy of the book, just text the word Diffuse to 478-475-2050. That's D-E-F-U-S-E to 478-475-2050. And we'll send you a free copy. Thanks again for listening. Now back to the show. But the main point that I'd like to make is, to me, it's more about our future health, even probably more so than death. And, and this gets back to something that I've talked about a lot of times in the past. And it's what I've called the three phases of retirement, the go-go years, the slow-go years, and the no-go years. You've probably heard those phrases before. I didn't invent them. A lot of people have used them, and, and more people are aware of that, that terminology. So in the real world, what I call the go-go years, this is when folks are young enough and healthy enough to, to go and do. You know, they're, they're out traveling. Uh, this is usually early on in retirement. Folks are usually a little more involved with their grandkids' activities, and, and their calendars stay very busy. But as you age, naturally, you start to slow down a bit. And so for most folks, not, not everybody, of course, people start slowing down a little bit in their early to mid-70s. And so 
These are the slow-go years. They don't travel as much. Uh, doctor's appointments take up a lot more of their time, and, and they usually spend a little bit more time at home. And then once people get into their early 80s, they, they start to enter this no-go phase, the, the no-go years here. And again, this, this is not everybody, but, but a lot of people do. Most people do. Uh, they really don't go anywhere, and, and they really don't do anything. They just sort of stay home, and, and they don't really spend a whole lot of their money. And so this is what I see happening for these folks. When these folks get their Social Security checks, they just wind up being deposited in their in their checking or savings account, of course, and they're they're never spent. And as I talk to more and more people, they've started to see these same patterns happening with with their parents. And so to me, this is why I've become a, a bigger fan of folks using their social security when it can have the most impact on the quality of their retirement. And and you may say, well, well Lee, I, I don't need social security right now. We're doing fine. All right, I understand that. I get it. But let's assume that your Social Security is $20,000 a year or whatever it is, $18,000, $20,000 a year. And then maybe your spouse's Social Security is the same. Well, what could you do with thirty-five dollars to $45,000 extra per year, even if you don't need it, to enhance your, your retirement lifestyle early on? I mean, think about what bucket list items you could go ahead and, and knock knock off your list and go ahead and experience those things with with your money. That's what I'm trying to talk people uh, to talk to people about. And so again, something just for folks to consider. So my challenge to you is simple. I want you to consider your health more than the math when making your decision on Social Security because to me, your your future health is way more important than the math behind some break-even calculation. Um, so hopefully this has been helpful. You know, that that's sort of my thoughts on Social Security, when to claim. If you've got questions about your specific strategy, I do hope you'd, you'll reach out and connect with us. Uh, go to www.talkwithlee.com and I'll certainly listen to you, uh, give me some information about your situation, and we'll certainly do our best to help you make the best decision for you. So anyway, thanks for tuning in. We do appreciate it. Uh, Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast and share with folks that you think may be interested, and we will see you next time. Investment advisory services are offered by J.L. Perkins Wealth Management, a registered investment advisor and insurance agency. Information is for illustrative purposes only and does not constitute tax, legal, or investment advice. Always consult with a qualified tax, legal, or investment professional before taking any action.